It's tabletop time. I'm Murray. I'm Jen. I'm Jazza. And I am Dave. And today we have a guest with us for a couple of weeks, and that is Al over here. Hi, Alan. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. It's very exciting to have you here. Mm. So let's jump into it, shall we? We oh my god, episode one of Call to Quest. This is the start of a whole new adventure. It's I'm gonna be really exciting. So excited and bold. Let's be fair. We're all playing two <laughs> characters. It's a whole thing. It's gonna be a ride, and I'm excited. People are gonna be along for it. Absolutely. New characters, new system. What could go wrong? New system. We like to take big bites. Let's see if we can chew it. We'll get there. But what 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 do we have to talk about first? All right. Believe not, everyone, we are streaming. This episode is being recorded and broadcast to a live audience on our YouTube channel. Our weekly That's stream. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our weekly stream times are in the description. Join and chat with us live by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss an episode. Our YouTube members get access to our post-stream hangout and back catalogue of streams so you can become a member by clicking the join button below our YouTube videos. All right. Uh, we are also a podcast as well as a stream. Yeah, we are. So check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. It's great to listen to while you travel, eat, work, rest, or sleep. Uh, one of the most polished audio dramas independently produced on the internet. There you go. Except for that one mic. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's the mic. It's the mic. The cable's broken. Just just still Murray's. <laughs> um, we want to say a huge thank you to all of our Patreons uh, and this episode is brought to you by our amazing Patreons um, if you'd like to support us it is one of the easiest and best ways to do so uh, we can dedicate more time to people uh, and keep every episode and every season we can improve on uh, if you do join our Patreon you get access to our private Discord community uh, you get to hang out with us after stream for our after parties uh, and you get other awesome perks like early access and input in well Gateway, so what we're developing currently. Um, all of the links will be down in the description below, um, but otherwise, patreon.com uh, slash tabletop time. All of your support makes this possible. Hmm. And it's, um, oh my God, what a journey we've been on. Hey, Dave, can you, can you speaking of journey, can you, uh, now I want to listen to journey. <laughs> <laughs> can you open Say up no it's tabletoptime.com for a second there? Because I just want to show you something really cool. Speaking Ooh. of announcements, I did we, it. Do you, did it's you? open. I was that quick. That was what? impressive. Can you go to the, to the post? Oh my God. Page? Are we watching on CRT? This is amazing. We are. Oh, this is Whoa, this look is at all these 3D print fast. Is that a brand new <laughs> shirt related to our minis channel? We have a new poster, Dave. Oh, go sorry. Post it. Call show. the Quest poster. Whoa, that looks really cool. Call to Quest poster and it's freaking amazing. And I feel like it's one of the most relatable things oh, we've ever produced. God. Bunch of kids sitting around playing a game and the adventurers behind them coming to life. So Just if you're like a role player and you want that vision of role play grandeur to come to life and to support the channel, there's so much over it. It's tabletoptime.com and it all is, is direct support to us. So go check it out. Prices are in AUD. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on the screen. All right. All right, well, you know what, everyone? I want to grab you and talk to you and say this episode will be using our in-development roleplay system, Gateway Roleplay. <laughs> if you want to learn the basics of how this system works, uh, check out the video link in the description for our prototype tour, which will include change notes as the system evolved. That's where we announced this prototype system. And uh, yeah, you can check out our excited announcement there. Learn more at gatewayroleplay.com and sign up to receive news of major releases. If you want to get involved, patrons get early access to our game assets and join in our weekly feedback posts. Sign up to Patreon, patreon.com slash tabletop time. Speaking of tabletop time, <gasps> I think it's tabletop time. Tabletop time to Ooh. get started. God. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Get ready! <laughs> it's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> we ready? We're ready. I Let's do it. Chat. I <laughs> was here. Our story begins as the greatest do with a single inauspicious day. It was May 27, 1988, and the school day was winding down at Sunset Springs Middle School. The school bell rings. 
No, that's a door. <laughs> Good oh, start. Good start. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, Someone having a school bell button secondary. for me it would be super good. <laughs> um, Miss Cunningham, a middle aged teacher in a horrible mustard brown skirt and jacket with a flat cut, short helmet of hair, and a disapproving scowl, speaks over the din. Remember, there's still one week of school. She's from England. <laughs> so make sure to study hard over the weekend. She trails off as more and more school children ignore her, grabbing their things and bustling straight down out of the corridors between the tables. They leave Callum Anderson alone at the back of the class. So Callum stands up. Uh, and he grabs a couple of his books uh, from under his desk and he's sh- kind of shaking with anticipation. He's r- super excited what's going to happen tonight. Uh, he kind of tossles his blonde hair, straightens himself up a little bit as well. His shirt's been tucked in. He needs to make sure it's just, just looking nice and crisp. And he also grabs a cassette player uh, that he has and he kind of looks at it and makes sure that the tape is still in there. It's the Rolling Stones and his brother gave it to him so he wants to make sure that, you know, it's in there because he's, yeah, he's been told to listen to it, so... Yeah, he puts all his stuff under his arm and he starts to sort of head out. Miss Cunningham stops him as she stands up and her sort of usual scowl that she reserves for literally everyone uh, cracks and breaks and she almost smiles, but that would be generous. Uh, As she reaches Callum. Don't forget, Callum, you promised you would teach me that trick to getting the VCR to work before you graduate. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, like, uh, it's, it's not that, that hard. It's, you know, just plug this into... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bore you another time. Um, but yeah, yeah, of course. I'll hold you to it, Callum. Now, study hard over the weekend. Just because next week is the last week of school doesn't mean it's time to give up and follow in your brother's footsteps. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's a good point. I will, I will. Uh, yeah, you, you have a good holiday too, miss. And she lets that smile return to the scowl as she watches Callum run out of the room, head towards the corridor with a little spring in his step. <clears throat> but elsewhere. Therefore, pardon me and not impute this yielding to light, love, which the Dark Knight hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I vow that tips with silver or these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconsistent. And the school bell rings. Jessica, Jessica. A strawberry red blushing girl with a round face like starts, freaks out and scurries back a few steps in anticipation of uh, a scolding she's had one too many times in this particular class. You do not need to be that close for this scene. You're supposed to be on the balcony. Sorry. She stutters sheepishly and uh, she then snatches up her bag in a (laughs) incredibly like hurried, I am going to be out of this room as quickly as I possibly can kind of way and just bolts out of the classroom, joining the massive horde of students who have exited this class as quickly as they possibly can on a Friday afternoon. And a younger male teacher with a short, neat afro, a small bow tie and an unseasonable cardigan sweater vest uh, awkwardly watches her go and looks back around the classroom. Make sure to study your lines, Melvin. I'll see you Monday. Yes, sir. And there stands alone in the class, Melvin Mendoza. Melvin sort of comes back to himself, performance over, sort of re-establishing himself. He likes to do that. He's left his character. And he's sort of himself again, this sort of thin, wiry young boy, very smooth complexion, like annoyingly smooth complexion for what is effectively a teenager now. (laughs) Gets a lot of irritated glances. And goes to pack up his books very neatly. They need to be ordered, very aligned before they go in the bag. It's very important to him. And as he leans down to do all that, he has to constantly 
brush his long forelock out of the way. It's uh, kind of aggravating sometimes, but uh, it also gets a lot of looks. He's often described as having very dreamy eyes, but in the idea that he looks like he's daydreaming and sort of unfocused elsewhere <laughs> until he's really come to grips with something that he enjoys. And he'll sort of finish packing up, straighten, and then remembering something, sort of get a bit of a smile, and he'll almost jog out of the room. As he jogs out of the room, he enters the absolute bustle that is the end of Friday school color corridors. Lockers run the length just big enough to fit the middle schoolers in if they're slim. And the bullies like to take advantage of that. There's a bunch of the early blooming guys and girls who are eager to play with the idea of dating and romance even though they don't really understand what that's supposed to mean awkwardly standing a couple of feet away from each other playing their games and trying to be cool but broadly most of the students are just heading out the door lockers are slamming books and bags are being thrown over the shoulder but it is in this ma absolute mess of chaotic student movement that Callum and Melvin find each other, eyes locking from across the corridor. Callum, you all set? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Let me let me just uh, grab grab my bag. All right, all right. Um, so Callum opens his locker, mm -hmm. and inside uh, there's like a variety of posters, mostly musicians, um, a couple of like sort of like fashiony sort of stuff as well, which is really like typical of the like 80s late 90s um and there's also a very distinct poster of uh george michael he's he's super into george michael at the moment um so callum grabs all his stuff that he needs uh in particular he makes sure he has a sheet of paper as well that he's been working really really hard on uh, puts everything into his backpack and slings it over his shoulder. As the bag slings over his shoulder, that same shoulder is met with a rather turbulent force smacking into it from the other direction, knocking Callum sort of roughly, uh, not off, off his feet, but just knocking him about a little <sighs> bit. And uh, the rather large thuggish form of a school bully they know as Todd just glares down and doesn't say a word, but sneers in the same way that you would expect uh, from someone who generally disapproves of the way you do the right thing all the time, for example. Oh, hey, 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 Todd. Mm. It, mm, mm. <clears throat> and then he just walks past, uh, smearing his, he's got, he's got some sort of like, oily, sweaty, uh, maybe wet from the, the taps or something, but he just wipes it on the shoulder of you as he walks past uh, in just a really antisocial way and then walks off. Man, this is, this is a new shirt. I... So I walk up to you. Yeah, that's that's nasty. Uh, just, oh, oh, sort of try and wipe that off a little thanks, bit. Thanks, man. He's, he's unpleasant. Mm, well... At least it's Friday, I suppose. I won't see him for another two days. <laughs> yeah, one could hope. Anyway, we should go. Yes, let's. Grabbing all their goods, their bags, they peel off out of the class and kind of burst out onto the school grounds. It's it's almost like a, a burst pipe. There's just students going in every direction. Cars filling the place as parents pick up students. But that is in the minority. Most kids are diving onto bikes and running home as... Most parents have pretty clear rules. Uh, we don't want to hear from you before dinner time. And uh, <laughs> as long as you're home before dinner time, that's fine. Anything else, you're in trouble. These kids uh, are just running off. Some are going to the park. Some are going to friends' houses. Some are racing down on bikes. But for Callum and for Melvin, they are heading left. They turn left as they exit the school grounds immediately crossing that fence, the minor fence that divides the middle school from the high school in Sunset Springs, the adjacent public buildings. And with only a few steps and glances looking around, you spot who you're looking for. Callum spots who he's looking for, leaning up against a car that is... Well, it has potential, but it's clearly a project car. We're talking about a muscle car, but uncared for, cheaply picked up and full of replacement parts. Uh, leaning against that 
we have a rather shaggy looking 16 year old with a blonde mullet pushed back uh, and wearing a leather jacket with a bunch of band patches on it. Um, he leans cigarette in hand and he seems to be talking with a girl who has uh, a blonde hairdo that is so gelled out to one side it mostly resembles a porcupine with spines just shooting out to one side. And she's hardcore chewing gum uh, like she's trying to crack a nut with her teeth. Uh, and as you sort of sidle up to this car, you, you can hear the background of their conversation, which vaguely seems to be flowing in the order of, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that's cool. Yeah, it is cool, yeah. And it seems to be pretty much the same thing on repeat, or at least to Callum and Melvin's ears. Hey, hey, Dylan. Yeah, hey. yeah, so <laughs> Saturday hey, night. Hey, don't, hey, so. don't just ignore me. I'm right here. Oh, oh squeak, what's going on? You, you remember, right, tonight? Whatever. What? <laughs> no, this, fine, is, kid. this is fine. really important to me. And he turns, sort of lets his cigarette hang down and ash falls onto the pavement. And just a minute, babe. <laughs> sort of shuffles himself. Looks for a moment of sincerely. Looks kind of like he's about to be dismissive until he catches the look in Callum's eyes. All right, kid. I wouldn't forget. I'll be there. Okay. That's fine. Wait, so the details were we're meeting... Yeah, yeah, yes. six at the pizza place. Yes. Okay. Y you got it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Get yeah. out of here. All Come right. on, cramp in my style. Okay. I I like your hair, Stacy. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, family <laughs> stuff. Don't worry about him. He's a little dweeb, but he means well. Where were we, babe? And the the two walk away, heading towards. The pepperoni. I keep calling it the pepperoni. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change the name. It's the pixel pizza place, but in my head, it's the pepperoni pixel pizza place. Uh, we go to Electro Mall. It's the latest futuristic, all inclusive, small town consuming mall. It's got everything you want, including all the functional businesses, as it drains the economy of the local town <laughs> and takes everyone's money as the large corporate conglomerate that has built this destroys the small town values that made America great. <laughs> <laughs> and inside Electro Mall, we have the Pixel Pizza Palace. This is the number one hangout spot for anyone under the age of 18 who knows what fun is, or in America, 21, <laughs> and who likes to put the party in pepperoni, am I right? That's what we want. It's part arcade, part pizza place with that classic quintessential American cheese yellow mixed with tomato red decor that clash in the perfect way with the glowing flashing RGB lights of a whole bunch of tube TVs set into arcade cabinets. Kids are starting to bustle in, but the earliest arrivers are already here. The ones who beelined out of class early and got here. Time to get the best cabinets. And this is where we find Cody Miller. Cody sprinted from school. Uh, everyone else sort of has those social niceties of like, yeah, I've got to like, you know, sign off with my friends or deliver my homework or whatever it is or like hang out and be cool. Cody has no shame. He just like grabbed his stuff. He didn't even put his stuff in his locker. He just had it on his lap ready. The bell went and he bolted out the door because the arcade is where he lives and breathes. Uh, the reason he wants to get there so early is because the kids who are sort of flunking off uh, had sort of spent their day there a little bit. And there's a few, you know, there's pickings there to be made. And so he gets there immediately, a sweaty mess, and finds a small handful of quarters. That's all he needs. So immediately sets to work uh, and picks sort of the machines that uh, he knows others are slower to get to because he wants to maintain his elusive reputation. He hasn't announced anything. He hasn't told anything, but there is a, a three-letter word that keeps popping up with the highest of high scores in this place. 
And as he thinks about that, there is a little cry from across across the room as a group of students rock up at a particular cabinet, a relatively new one in the area. Um, Gosh darn it! Tor! Tor again! I swear I had the record yesterday! I don't understand how he does it on every machine! Ah! Calm down, Greg. It's fine. And that punctuates. Cody uh, chuckles to himself, but he keeps it to himself. He's got a, He's playing the long game. When people know his tour, they'll finally re- really respect him. They won't be able to help it. But he's made a few... Uh, made a few scores, he's done what he needs to do, he sits down and waits in anticipation for his friends to arrive. Trying to look cool and relaxed, like no big deal, like let's do this, but also feeling proud of himself having gotten the score, uh, and drenched in sweat. Games are played for several minutes um, until that frustrated kid from before walks over and says, hey, you look like a massive nerd. What gave you that impression? How the, how do I do better at these? Do you know how to play these games better? This Tor keeps beating my scores. Oh, sounds elusive and mysterious. Uh, I'm afraid I am not very experienced, and I cannot be of help. Sir. You know what? I'm done with this guy, and <laughs> he just like walks away as soon as as soon as the like the real like talking starts happening. Just like nah, <laughs> I regret interacting. But as he walks away and. Uh, and uh, Cody's eyeline follows him out the door, still sort of finishing his sentence. Um, that that door opens, and you see we have our good Melvin and Callum entering the front of the building. Ah, my compatriots! I have saved you some seats. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Co- Cody. Hello. And how have class for you both today? Uh. It was okay. Yeah, it was fine. Okay, so the plan. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock, we provide the pizza, he brings the game. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Six o'clock. Oh my god, I'm so excited. At your place. Mm -hmm. I actually found a copy of Dungeons & Dragons. I've been studying it nonstop, and I'm pretty sure I have it memorized, and I know exactly how to play. Already? Oh, yes. I stay up. Impressive. No big deal. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Eidetic memory, I believe they call it. Dude, check out my character sheet. I, I've been working on it, like, a oh, week. Oh, no way! Yeah, yeah. I imagine we spend a couple minutes just poring over our characters. Then a few minutes later, may, well, a few minutes turns into a few hours mm-hmm. as you play games at the Pixel Pizza Palace uh, until the clock hits six, which was the time you were meant to be picked up and nothing happens. <laughs> He should be here by now. Uh, yeah, this pizza's gonna get cold. It's already getting. Hey! Nice. Don't say my pizza's cold, uh, all right? Uh, Come on, sorry, kid. Sorry, now, Cody, sorry. you asked for this pizza at six. You can't pay for nothing. I watch you walking around like a little rat in here. Now, you got the money I want this time. Uh, I didn't move all the way here from New York to deal with you Californians. <laughs> 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 with your with your nonsense, I'm not paying for pizza pie. Uh, it's it's so it's okay. I, I I got this one. I can. I can contribute. And he, he like fiddles and he's like he's got like four quarters. Um, but that he saved it. He held him back himself back from using it on the machines. Mm-hmm. But that's all he's got. Uh, come on, Tony. You know us. We wouldn't skip on you. He'll, he'll be here. He'll be here. So you said you had four quarters. Yeah. Um, okay. It's like 25 cents or something. <laughs> it's a dollar. No. Oh, it's a dollar. Oh. It's a dollar. Yeah, it's a dollar. Yeah. yeah. So, no. mighty contribution, but... Uh... <clears throat> I didn't know I was carrying the burden myself. And surely this is a shared responsibility. I mean, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I slapped down five dollars. Five dollars. I don't know what the economy well, I'd was. Love, but... I'd love to be able to give you like an, <laughs> an accurate answer, but you know what? If well, you don't account for hey, inflation, no, 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 it's fine. It's simple because guess what? Hey, we do a good deal here, and uh, four quarters is half the price. It's two bucks a pizza. Come on. Paid for half. I've never seen him pay for anything in his life. <laughs> uh, 
still slap down the rest of the buddy. And all right, take kids, the you're all right. Now enjoy the pizza and uh, keep your greasy fingers off the consoles. You know the rules. Russ. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Tony. Tony. Thank uh, you. You're Thanks. welcome. Thanks, yeah, you're good kids, all right. I like your shirt. You've never broken anything. And 605 comes by, and the pizza does start to get a little bit cold. Where is he? Uh, he knows, right? You reminded yes, him. Yes, yes, I did, I and did. he definitely knows. He yes, yes. I bet his car is broken down. I mean... It's probably too cool to be seen with the likes of us. Maybe we should just walk. The door opens and silhouetted against the sort of sun... Uh, the bright sun of six o'clock. It's not nearly sundown. The heroic figure of Dylan slouches in the doorway with collar popped. Cigarette held like out the front door of the building while he like opens the thing and he gives it a little shrug and he, hey, uh, come on kids, let's go. Oh, finally. Oh my gosh. Ah, shotgun. <sighs> okay. It's time. <laughs> I'm just excited to be going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't forget the pizza. Yes, yes. As you all walk outside and pile into this rust bucket of a car that he's freshly licensed for and the doors close, he looks back <clears throat> over the back seat uh, where Cody's sitting in. Come on, Cody Miller. What? Miller. I mean, he's he's really good at the game. Like, he's he's really excited. Dude. Hiya. You're hanging out with him. What? What? Right. You're gonna make me look like a loser by association. Oh, it's not that bad. I mean, no one's gonna know. It actually works the other way around. You're right. cooler when I'm he, there because he leans I'm like a back black hole of loser. While you're talking, and <laughs> like been told. he leans over because you know they don't have the the, the headrest <clears throat> as high. He leans over the middle seat, puts his hand on top of Cody's head, and just pushes his head <laughs> down so he like slides down into the chair uh, to below like the window height of the back seat. Just like pushes your head down so you don't. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's, All right, that's that, better. Stay down there. All so right. turn to you. Say, you're in. I'm like, it's good. Yeah, that's fair. I better not catch anything. And he shakes his hand off and then turns the car on with too, too many turnovers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a beefy engine that takes too long to get going. And then it screams off with a, definitely a tire screech as he drives <laughs> recklessly this is insane. out of the <laughs> pigs of pepperoni, pigs of pizza palace. <laughs> The PPP. Cody looks around and I think even I'm sort of like slumps of like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like shivering with excitement and the footwell of the back seat. <laughs> I can't sh- believe I managed to be else. here. It's only a short trip. It's only a short trip. Did everyone remember their seatbelts? One short trip for us <laughs> and, and, and one long adventure for the, for the oh future. Oh my God. Just, the, just shut up, Cody, please. <laughs> the trip <laughs> takes three detours, two stop-offs, and about an hour. <laughs> oh, no. As... <laughs> it's not a true true. <laughs> as, as Dylan goes home because he didn't get... He forgot something, and then he stops and grabs something, and then he goes to the uh, oh, the corner store where he picks up some drinks. Oh. He he bounces around a bunch, and, and there's not a word of complaint dared to be uttered by when he's in earshot. Because he's just getting ready, right? <laughs> I, I hand everyone a piece of pizza at this point. Oh, oh he's, he's been eating it while he's been driving. <laughs> but across town, while this adventure is underway, there is a quiet house. A calm place as it reaches quarter to seven, where a young girl is being quietly readied for bed. This young girl's name is Sarah Mendoza, and she is the youngest sister of Melvin Mendoza. And she's currently in her room, dutifully lining up her dolls and combing their hair, following the usual routine that she kind of does before she gets ready for bed. And in the room with her is Megan Baker. Um, Meg is very, like, meticulously going through something in her head. Um, she's looking around the room going, yep, yep, done that, okay, yep. She's got a book next to the bedside table. She's uh, kind of bouncing off Sarah and going, like, you've got Dolly, you've got Teddy. Um, yeah. Good, good. All right. Um, 
she's very much uh, feeling like she's got a hand on the situation and she's finally got Sarah settled down enough to be ready for bed and then Meg can just have a nice, quiet evening, reading her book, waiting for Melvin to be dropped off. So... Um the Mendoza parents are actually away for the weekend and with the eldest sister uh, way too busy with study, babysitter has been hired to look after their youngest, a perhaps not as expected or planned last addition to the family as she is many years younger than Melvin. Uh, and young Sarah Mendoza is readying herself with her bedtime routine, um, which is quite early, but it is proper. Uh, she needs a good rest. Meg's been slowly encouraging it to be a bit earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure bad. Meg's yeah. got some study to do probably yeah. as well. And as this quiet atmosphere continues for 10 minutes or so and the routine is done, she ate early, 6 o'clock, there was leftovers for her. Uh, TV dinners are quite common and the mm -hmm. microwave gets plenty of use in this house. <clears throat> and she's now in bed calmly. Um, can you tell me the, the story? In like the last last night. Yeah, you want that one again? Yeah. All right. Uh, settle in. Come on, tuck yourself into bed. And she pulls her sheets up, and sort of you can already see that she's had a big day at school. Uh, she, it's her first year at school, and yeah, she's she's pretty tired, and and it starts to settle in. There's a real serenity, which is suddenly broken by the sound of a loud car with a muffler that is not doing its job, backfiring a couple of times as it screeches around the corner. And to Meg's ear, sounds like it stopped right out the front of the house. All right, uh, give me a sec, Sarah. Just lie down and close your eyes, okay? Everything will be okay. Is everything okay? Yeah, absolutely. I'll just... Go check what that loud noise is, that's all. Okay. And she sort of looks a bit sheepishly at the door as Meg runs downstairs. And at the front door, Melvin be the first to enter oh. his own house. You were back hmm? earlier than I thought. Meg! Come in, come in. Uh, right. That was, that was tonight. Right. Yeah. What? Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh, some, some friends, some friends coming up. Ah, uh, they dropped you off? Awesome. Yes. Uh, and Meg will kind of try and put her head out and wave like a thank you and try How to usher him in. Pushes through the door <laughs> behind oh Melvin. God, I'm so excited. Go there. Uh, the, hi. Hi. Hey. Is this your friend, yeah. Melvin? Count. Meg? Count. Meg? Yeah. 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 Uh, he, vaguely, yeah. 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 Uh, uh -huh. Cody. <laughs> What are they doing here? Greetings! <laughs> My goodness. Oh dear. Hi. Don't worry, you don't need to provide sustenance. We've had it all the way. And I'm like eating the last of a crust and sort of wander through. And I'm actually pushing, like walking past <laughs> yeah. through yeah. the doorway yeah, into the room. Just, yeah. just like kind of frozen and shocked yeah. just by the doors. They just um, walk yeah, in. Yeah, sort of like, inching like, past, like, you know, no, uh -huh, we're slightly things. in trouble, but we're still going to get <laughs> in here. But I don't have any. Do uh, is there any mountain dew? Oh, I better French? go with Cody. I'm going to go check on Cody. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you lead him. You lead him. Oh, we need pens and papers. Pens and papers. Yeah. No, it'll be, it'll be fine, Meg. We, we'll, we'll be quiet. Well, your, your parents didn't say anything about this. If, if they hear about it, do you, do you know who they're going to get mad at? The kids are already opening cupboards, oh pulling out a glass, goodness. getting no, a glass of drink. That. Like, everyone's just <laughs> making themselves... Uh, I mean, you know, Cody hasn't been here before, but, like, I mean, Callum's around yeah. a bit. What's your, what's your name? Don't... Please, please... Cody! Don't, no, no, don't go in the cabinets, please. Cody... <sighs> It'll just be quick, right, Melvin? It'll be fine. It's just a couple of hours. It's okay. I'll hours? pour you one, too. And as Meg sort of turning, just turned into the kitchen, like back to the door, the door's sort of falling closed behind it, these kids that have run inside, there's a, the sound of a hand slapping a door and the door sliding back open, and she spins around to see uh, <laughs> Dylan. You. Dylan Anderson. Oh, um, Meg Baker. Didn't expect to see you here. What are you doing here? Well, you know, I'm doing a favor for my kid brother. Drop dropping Malvin off. Thank you. Drop. <laughs> no, that ain't how this is working. I gotta, 
a man of my word, you know. And he he like steps in the doorway and the door shuts behind him. He's got a pile of books under his arm. I'm going to sort of slink past around Dylan. Oh, good. You you know each other. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, sort of push, no. push Dylan through. We'll just we'll just be going this way. He catches Waltz in here. Uh, I, well, I'm in charge hey, here. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> Calm down, Meg. Don't get in a twist. Excuse me. Look, I've we go way back. Meg's fine. She's we cool. shan't be a burden. <laughs> see, see, we won't be a burden. She didn't even snitch on me last time. I stole her math answers. Okay. Oh, you look. didn't know about that. <sighs> I knew you were looking. I knew you were. And the teacher didn't believe me. Now, then we'll have a basement, right? This is fine. Yeah, just, we'll just go yeah, the we'll play in the kitchen no table. Looks the good. What? No, that's like... Basement. You're not playing no. anything, all right? I just got Sarah to bed. I just got your sister to bed, and we're not making any you noise. Guys, the we're big one isn't anything. getting us stuck in our adventure! And I'll just start <laughs> like, <laughs> grabbing kitchen yeah. things and heading Make, into the basement. The, the basement is cooler, and the basement will be quieter. <laughs> so we'll just go down to the basement. Not It'll be fine. a peep. I'm like okay. yeah, doing exactly. like the obnoxious big step sneak, and I'm like, you <sighs> won't even know we're here. I really, really hope so. Because I was going to have a lovely evening with my book, and then you guys showed up. That's yeah. what I pointed, Cody. He'll be cool. He'll be cool. You know what? Right. Even better than That's a book. That's impossible. An adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just don't, don't break anything, okay? Just, uh, I'll come down to help you set up. No, you, you, you don't need to. Yeah, I we'll be fine. Don't That's want cool. you guys to break anything at all. Please. Well, I'm just going to let you have your little, like, thing here, and I'm going to go set up because Look, I need to be in, in my groove. Okay. No, no, people don't let Dylan Anderson do anything. Dylan Anderson does what he needs to do, <laughs> and I need to help my bro with his nerdy little game. Yes. Is that what you tell yourself? Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, um... Uh, you have Dylan, just, um... Let let yourself uh, follow Cody. Dylan pulls corner. out a cigarette and puts it in his mouth. <laughs> 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 I think Meg goes to find a window and just like, <clears throat> death it, staring. Tell Melvin, there's no smoking up. in your house. Like, uh, may, maybe not that one. They'll definitely know. The parents will know. And if you're gonna do this, and I can't kick you out, then at least don't give them any signs, please. Uh, all right. And he slides it back in. Look, I don't want to ruffle your feathers. You got a hard enough yeah. time being the class pet, so. Whew. All right, let's do it. He heads downstairs. Yes. Not a sound. We're fine. We'll be fine. Sort of like placating, sort of backing away. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding into the doorway downstairs. I've uh, already started spreading out the chips and Mountain Dew and uh, a really old kind of gross obviously not new version of the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons slapped down on the table and I look eagerly up at Dylan. Dylan's eyes dart down to the Dungeons and Dragons copy on the table and he just says, what the hell, man? An adventure! A wait. We're, we're not playing that. That's for like Satanists and stuff. That's like got some devil stuff in it. No. I, My well, parents said that's pretty dark. No, we don't need that. I got this new game, Cutting Edge. What? It's called gateway roleplay. But I haven't studied. What's what's gateway? Well, we're about to find out. So, settle in, kids. I've got your characters right here. Or did you make your own? How prepared are you I for have. this adventure? I made my own. More than you could know. <laughs> we're ready. Full ready. Let's do this. Rogue, you. Uh, I'm I'm a fighter. <laughs> Wizard, of course. We need a healer. Well, I got that covered. I know it's your first time, and I'm going to be guiding you through the world. So, um, uh, I've made a cleric for you. Awesome. Yeah, nice. I'm so excited. Uh, uh Meg, if you're going to sit there watching us like a hawk, you may as well play. Look, I just put Sarah to bed. Okay. I just want you to not make any sounds. Don't break anything. That's all I'm here for. Wait, well, did you say play? Yeah. I mean, I've got a spare character. Just in case one of these uh, nerds didn't make one. All right, hey. let's see it. And <laughs> he slides across a character sheet that's built for you. Uh, well, built not for you, but is built. And 
Why did I tab to the wrong tab? I'm very Meg's going to start writing something on it. Just like a ju- <laughs> Whoa, you don't even know how the game works. What are you doing? Then you say it's my character? All right. What's their name? Katori. That's... Oh, well, all right. I'll introduce you when it's relevant. Um, it's not bad. Welcome. Thank you, different. And then he walks over, uh, brushes off a dusty um, sort of old record player that's been moved downstairs since the huh. radio got an upgrade. Careful. Heck yeah, bro. And oh, starts boy. going through some vinyls. Ambience. Grabs the right nice. track for him. Yeah, this will do. Puts it in. Comes back to the table. Welcome to the world of Zozo. <gasps> it's time to play in the world of a call to quest. Yay! And as we enter into the world of our children's imaginations, <laughs> we enter the world of Zozo, created, of course, by Dylan. Zozo. A world, a world beset by ancient foes, nemeses uncounted, but a world that has known peace through the stalwart actions of glorious heroes honored from time past. It is a world of many places, but our story will be focused along the watchtowers of the spine where old and new adventurers meet at Crosstown on the southern edge of the world. It is a hardy town on the edge of civilization. It is a town that lives as far from the capital city's bursars and taxmen as possible. A wonderful place of peace but a place that has known the scars of ancient war. Inside, there are more services than you would expect, with a blacksmith, a stable, a large tavern, even a small bathhouse. Most people here live a hardy life, with nothing much to punctuate it but the occasional visits from the guards of the Crimson House, an order of warriors tasked with guarding the watchtowers along the spine. But today, something is different. The old wizard Oswald stands in the town square, looking at the sky, seeing portents amongst the celestial bodies, portents of a bad time. Do you guys know what portents are? Does, did you learn that in school yet? Uh, yeah, I know. Didn't. Yeah, sick. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like literature. you do. Hey, I'm, there's more to me than meets the eye. Come on. Where was I? It's alright, Maggie. He's good at this. He's good at this. Okay. So, <clears throat> worrying about the day, we have Oswald. Oh, I don't like the sounds of this. This evil of woods. Come, companions! I'm an old man! Uh, no, dude, um, this is the part where you, like, introduce your character and tell everyone else who you're playing, so oh. you can do your description, like, what you're wielding. Oh, I, I, here you've got. I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good voice, by the way, man. Thank you. <laughs> that acting class is paying off. I... I am the wizard, Oswald. I am the ninth in my order and highest, still alive in my circle of dear friends, long gone and powerful of name and title. As Oswald the wizard, looks about the portents, his eyes fall to a familiar fellow, an adventurer he's worked with many times before, a reliable, if strange fellow, the thief known as Pockets. Slunked off, <clears throat> not nearby the party, because uh, there are a few 
juicy looking pockets nearby. And he, you know, likes to take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. So he's attempting to pick What's a couple look? of pox. Oh! Dude, this is the, the look like, the description. Cody, I thought you were a super nerd. You were going to be good at this. I'm sorry. We, we, we're just really excited. Okay? It's fine. Look. You're, well. I'm it's your ne- first time. I get it. I'm nervous. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Where was I? <clears throat> yes. There is Pockets in the corner with his red cloak, black hood, and cunning smile. He's well-spoken, charming if he needs to be, but more reliably sticky with his fingers and very adept at filling his own pockets from others. Something he's engaging in currently. Oswald approaches pockets, seeing it important to gather his friends about him when strange portents are in the air. Portents! Ah, no. Pockets! Yes. Uh, Get out of other people's so, this instant. I, when opportunity presents itself, you know me. Yes, where were we? You incorrigible young scallywag. Is Celestia here yet? I haven't seen her. <laughs> and almost to make a liar. I should do my narrator voice. And almost to make a liar out of Oswald. Well, the blue tabard wearing Celestia strides confidently toward the pair. Celestia takes a couple of steps and eyes off all of the other townsfolk. She notes that most of them have a warm smile on their face and she smiles back and she lets her beautiful golden hair flow in the wind. And she says, Yes, it is I. Evil trembles in my name, Celestia. Really going for it there, hey, bro. Uh, I I dig. Look, female character, I didn't expect it. I'm going to be honest. I like it. I thought she did it really well, to be honest. That was really cool. I agree. Uh, And and Dylan looks at Meg very purposefully. (laughs) Chicks can be cool, too. It's fine. She's a cool warrior chick. Who's supposed to do that, actually? Uh, Who who are you playing? My character? Yeah, what was the one you prepared? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, Okay. Uh, Look, let me do my thing. All right. (laughs) All right. As the three characters gather, two figures stride in with worry in their eyes. One wearing the purple of his order, a face known to them. With his very cool short afro and his stylish headbands and his general really good sense for having fashion and style and cool stuff, he's basically awesome. And uh, you guys know he's really awesome. It's the cleric. Hendrax, worshipper of the gods of earth and stone, and a clerical bard. He's pretty cool. Oh my god, dude, dude, Hendrix, Hendrix, yeah, yeah, that's clever. I see what you did there. It's it's not derivative, it's fine. (laughs) Don't break the immersion. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's really cool. It's called the original suspension of disbelief. Proceed. Thanks. Pockets, Celestia, Oswald. I come bearing dire news and a new friend for you all. <gasps> this is Katori. Kator- this is Katori. She is a wonderful, red-headed, beautiful human woman who I bring with news of... She if definitely that- has uh, fox ears. She would like to have fox ears. And she speaks like this. And a fox tail. Well, what, well hold on. What the, what the hell? Is, what do you mean she got fox ears? It's my character. It's my word. There's no fox. What do you mean fox, fox ears it's in my word? Russian. This is ridiculous. Russian. This is ridiculous. There's no way we're going to have fox ears in my... If they're all humans, I didn't say this. I'm sorry. I whoa, thought this was whoa, a fun whoa, game whoa. where I could choose what I wanted to be. A communist? <laughs> hold on. I'm surprised you knew that word. I know many words, madam. That's very impressive. Wait. Fox girl. My setting. Foxy lady. 
It flies. I can do this. All right. Thank you can you. have the fox ears and the fox tail. Tell us Great. about Katori. She has really big muscles, and she's really tall, really built. She's got the fox ears and the tail, and she does not look worried at all. She's just standing kind of behind Hendrax, just watching the party, kind of sussing them out. When I gave you the impression that I was with a worried warrior lady, that was a misapprehension, my friends. She's very cool and confident, and she's got foxy fox ears, and that's pretty great. It is pretty great. Now, are you? tell me about this, um, this woman you've brought to the group. We haven't met her before. No. Uh, you. Yes. You said your name was Katori. Katori. You sound foreign. Where are you from? I travel around. What Looking brings you to here? help out. We were about to uh, find a job, I believe. I'm uh, down for a bit of adventuring myself. You look adept. I'd say eyeing the mace. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> I stride forward. It will be a pleasure to have you with us, Katori. Do you battle? I have been known to do such things. I sort Impressive. of waddle forwards, sort of stooped but proud, which creates a lot of very interesting angles in my back. Battle? I, I've been known to have my share. Sort of waddle forwards indignantly, sort of with a proud back, but also stooped with age to create a whole funny angle <laughs> through my spine. <laughs> <laughs> I, have you know, I can... Tangle it with the best of them, young lady. It is true. It is very impressive. Well, now that you're all fast friends, I have to tell you my dire news. Nobody's heard from the watch guards of the Crimson House for three days. <gasps> See, it's not so. And there was smoke on the horizon. We've got to go and find out what happened to the King's men. The guards of the Crimson House are infallible. There must be something terrible afoot. They're better than the best of us, so if something's happened to them, we're in real trouble. The best thing we can do is make haste for the tower. It's a tough climb, and it's about six hours from here. Has so anyone else noticed? Well, I mean, I noticed. Just I was out there jamming, and I saw some things happen, and I thought, this looks like a problem. It's a big fire, and I... Saw you on the road, Katori, and you looked able. And now we're here, talking about saving the day. It all really comes back. It's quite circular and clean. So shall we do it? Shall we be the heroes the world needs us to be? There's nothing I'd rather. We shall take up this noble crest, good clerk. All right. So there's bound to be loot. Ha ha ha! We need to head there with haste. So... Who's the fastest and who's the slowest of us? Uh, that would be me. And uh, off I sprint. All right, I'm going to just <laughs> to flex the dice muscles for the <laughs> session. Why am I being me? I don't exist in this context. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. All right, everyone. Uh, do you know how the game works? I haven't really explained it yet, so... Um, no, tell us, tell us. All right, so you're going to grab... You're going to say the skill you want to do, and you grab a bunch of dice. Mm -hmm. A bunch then, of dice? Well, the number in the sheet, it's it's there. So, like, let's say, for example, we're going to go for a run. So we're going to do a fitness check. So in this instance, you would say, like, fitness, and then I would pair it with something as the GM. So you have... Set the task, sir, and I shall oblige. I would like to use my fitness ability to sprint ahead. Right. I have two? That oh. can't be right. Two fitness. Is yeah, that what the that's did? right. So now you're going to pair it with something, and because this is going to require deft moving across, like, rugged ground, I'm going to get you to roll reflexes with it. So grab the number in that one. Ah. And... and now, if you're trying to do the same thing, but your character has, like, a different way of doing it, uh, you can tell me how you might like to do that. So if you don't want to use fitness, but you understand you still got to, like, make this long-distance journey, you can pick something else. But first, I'm going to set a challenge level. Look, your adventure is at six hours. It's only going to be low, so I'm going to say two, and you got to beat that or equal it with your dice. Aha! A challenge level of two. Good luck, Cody. 
All I right. got three, Thor! That's right. So uh, we, know, we power know your character's fine. Forge ahead into the sunset with a glimmering power that only a hero like... What was my name again? Uh, let me just, Pockets. That's right. Wow. So, uh, all right. do all of you get that? Do you want to try a weird roll, or should we get back to it? Yeah, can I try a roll? Yeah, how would you like to do yeah, it? Yeah, go for it, Mick. Can I use agility to, like, agile jump over and, you know, just kind of gracefully, but fast. A graceful up. leap! I yeah. love it! All right, so uh, if you're going to use, like, fox agility to Absolutely. bound across rocks and do some kind of sweet stuff like that, you're going to use agility. I'm actually going to get you to pair it with the way you described it, your finesse, because you got to be coordinated to do all that. All so, right. uh, same challenge level, though. Challenge two. So I add the dice. That's right. Good luck. Just like this playing Yahtzee. Dice here, Nick. Thank you. I await with bated breath. Rolling is so fun. All right. <laughs> really, with this kid. I think that's pretty good. He says, uh, <laughs> eyes, eyes at Callum. <laughs> We gotta work on your friends in high school when you get here. <laughs> well, don't judge him. Right, uh, three three successes. All right, you do it too. So uh, everyone get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I complete that. Yeah. Back to the world. So, um, <laughs> can I get you guys to roll? We'll do one as well. Are you happy yeah, to right. do fitness reflexes, or do you have another plan? Yeah. My wi my wizard is pretty weak, but he's old and wiry, and he has a certain level of fitness. So he has fitness of three. So I'd like to do some long-distance jogging. All right, so you pick the fitness. I pick the reflexes. Again, same, same as pockets. Reflexes? All right. That's two. Same challenge level, it's two. All right. Yeah. That's three. three. You're, all, you're done. So now it's just you, Calm. Nice. Uh, I'm going to, like, like power walk my way through. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Okay. Yeah. What skill would you like to use? A power. heroic march. I love it. <laughs> power? Yeah. Well, in this instance, sometimes there's going to be a bit of pushback, and I'm the GM. So... I know you don't know the system, but power is like burst strength. So it's like lifting up a car or doing a deadlift or something sick uh. like that. So power is going to get you somewhere in a short time, but this is like a six-hour okay. journey. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, agility then, the same. Agility? Yeah, okay, yeah, you're going to move fast. Well, yeah. we're going to um, we're gonna be... Oh, you're going to try the, the fox route. All right, so yeah, use finesse yeah. with that as you try and like move, jump from rock to rock. Requires balance and, yeah. You got this. Come on, Yeah. There's yeah. a dice uh, cam. <laughs> <laughs> Just one by one. Put them over. Just, yeah, hold yeah. on. Ro roll hold it on the table. Yeah, roll it on the oh, table so go. you don't yeah. lose the dice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good there stuff, Cam. Go. Did oh. you get three, too? Yeah. Oh, it yeah. wasn't meant to be. <laughs> well done, Cam. All right. And as you all start running and making haste, keeping a really solid pace, uh, Hendrax, the cleric, almost dances with each of his each of his feet landing on a little moat of magic as he runs along beside you, keeping pace. His power is legendary, and uh, you know him as one of the, the great healing clerics and forces of the world. You can rely on him to have your back. As you all head through the wilderness, you head through the gentle hills and soft forests that make up the bottom part of the spine. As you crest the last few of them. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I haven't run a game in a while. <clears throat> That's right. That's oh, right. Do you need some water? So, as you bound across he, the hills. He does not. <laughs> remember my sick voice I was doing? You guys like that, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. It was awesome. So, thanks. All right. As the adventurers. As the adventurers bounded across the hills, they. Make it to the edge of the greened area, and in yeah. front of them, a desolate expanse spreads out before them. Sharp, jagged rocks <gasps> jutting from the earth, making for an aggressive and dangerous landscape. There's got to be a bad guy here. Ahead of them, they know the plains of despair. 
<gasps> no. The dark place. The horrible place. The place that the abyssal dread spawn came from centuries ago when they raided and almost burnt the world to the ground. The abyssal uh, dread spawn? The plains of despair, I've read about them. Never mm -hmm. seen them myself. Surely the guards of the Crimson House are in grave danger. Mm, we must rescue them, and quickly. I wouldn't have considered myself adept enough to rescue a guard of the Crimson House, but if not us, then who? Can I get one of you to make, like, an acuity check? That's, like, the keenness of your senses, so, like, your eyes, how you can spot stuff. I'm okay. like a fox, right? Right. Uh, can you do, like... Uh, acuity wisdom. You gotta know what you're looking for. Yeah. Not so good at the wisdom? I can, I can do it. All right. Uh, challenge level three for this one. Good luck. That was a five. No. With, oh, oh, no. Bad luck, Meg. Look, I with, got distracted. With no additional information, you head forth. And traveling at pace, our adventurers strode towards the tall mesa that marks the once broken pillar of the final mountain, the tailbone of the spine of the world. They reach it, pushing further and faster, climbing up the treacherous terrain as a winding narrow path is littered with rock and debris, fresh and worrying. There's evidence that something has been here before. Something recently. A monster? The level. Be careful. Well, uh, you could, like, anytime you want to prompt a check in the game, you can do it. So, like, if you want to see oh. if it was a monster, you can make a check. Yeah, for I'm, that. Not, okay. I'm not okay. good at that. Or maybe else. your investigation. Yeah. Like, look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Investigation. With a, a wither build, surely you have invested in uh, your intelligence skills? What's your intelligence? I have an intelligence of three. Very good. What's your investigation? Also three. All right. Well, uh, oh. this one requires a bit of looking, so you're going to be mixing this with reflexes. Reflexes. All right. Hey, you need good eyes as well as good uh, brain. Reflexes two... Three. All right. Challenge level two on this. It's pretty obvious. Two. I got two. And Oswald the wizard, peering down upon the ground, spots footprints, but charred yes. and burnt, as if every footstep cindered with flame around the edges. They lead oh. up and there are many of them, dozens, spreading and leading back down to the plains of despair. Oswald, it seems you've caught sight of something. What is it? Yes. This doesn't bode well. There are many, many charred footprints. But they all seem to be going in a direction that we can follow. Hmm. And follow it, you can. The adventurers climbing through the narrow path, eventually after hours, reach the top of the mesa, and they arrive at the far watchtower, the place that looks down upon all of the plains of despair. Nice. We got there, guys. And as they walk closer, Hendrax gasps. <gasps> oh no, this doesn't bode well at all. What do you see? Look, what is it? There, the dead body of a crimson god. <gasps> no! Two oh more, three. Gosh. They've fallen. No, it couldn't be. I can't imagine it. Not this terror returned to the world. And then... The front door of the tower that stands resolute before you smashes open 
And in front of you, a black, charred, flaming beast standing <gasps> seven foot tall with curved horns no. holds in the neck of the guard captain that you all have met and seen before. Blood streaks down his hands as this burning fire in his eyes terrifies you all to the bone as this horrible creature he leers. He oh, is. That is absolutely haunting. He is really good at this. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, man. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, anyway. This is great, Dylan. He's. It's pretty immersive. Yeah. I concur. Eyes lock. There was a sickening crack. The guard's neck snaps. This no. foul demon beast looks towards you, muscles flexing, evil in its eyes. I am Varath, the Ruinbringer, and I am returned to this world. See me, humans. I will destroy you all. Oh, no. Um, is this a uh, run situation? Because I don't think we can take him. We don't run in the face of danger. You will eat on my blade. He draws Sickly. a sword the length of your body and charges towards you. Hendrax, what do we do? He doesn't even have pockets, you guys. What's the point? You freak out. <laughs> 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 What now? Uh, how close is he to? Yeah, what's from what's above? A knocking. What's happening? What's no. the loud noises? No, sir, it's okay. Oh, oh, oh no! I no. no. at the best <laughs> moment. I need to tell mom. Melvin, Sarah, Sarah, your guys. are under control. It's okay, Sarah. Are you going to deal with the, that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, don't you let okay? my have to die, okay? All right. We'll pause. So, sort that out. Go on. All right. Her mom can't know about this. No. That we can agree on. I'm coming, Sarah. Do you want to just fiddle with the cord? Sorry. It's like in the <laughs> fitting. Yeah. Yeah. If is it cuts a bit out, better? It is. Mm. We can actually hear. I'm ah. coming, Sarah. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> and... That Sorry. is where we will leave our young adventurers for now. Hey. As we return to them <laughs> next wow. week. Wow. This I'm, was. Oh, yeah, no, please I'm tell pumped. me. That was really fun. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> this was a little bit it's of a, a short of, episode so because we were getting set up and we were learning our characters. To yeah, to establish. But yeah, look, we're in the adventure now. And I think we're getting the tone about the sort of stepping in and out. Um, this was really fun. Hmm. Everyone's doing a really good job. I hope, I hope everyone watching this is enjoying it. Be a lot more on like point. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get used Love to it, but it is intense. I think the back trick is gonna be yeah. We need to just avoid speaking as our like eighties character <laughs> too often. Like I think when we speak as eighties, we come back and we all speak as eighties. Yes. Yeah, so what I think, yeah. I think it's fun. My my vibe, and I'm sure the audience agrees. It's fun for the first episode to be yeah. bouncing back and forth a lot, but I think as we get yep. to it more, it'll be more measured and a lot more in the universe. But we're just introducing everything in this yeah. session. I hope you like our characters. I hope you've enjoyed it, viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. But not it for the people watching us right now. Absolutely not. And in fact, uh, we've been promising and promising and promising that we would fix the Patreon scroll. <gasps> the news is... Well, we haven't fixed it, but I'm thinking... <laughs> we'll put it, well, let's just do it in post. It's the whole We've got one. Cliffhanger. We have one. You do? Yeah. Uh, no, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> no, Dave. Not that again. No, we'll do a, we'll do a post one. <laughs> no, no, uh, but we have one. Uh, I, Liam has made one. Oh, great. Well, there uh, you go. Yes. We have Savior. a so, oh, Savior. It does. <laughs> it's, it's not the fix. It needs to be manually done yeah. each time, but we do have one we can drop in in the in the. Our patrons, in the patrons. Patrons. We're going to make it work. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you, your patrons. support. And we're going to go hang out with you. And look at that. We're on schedule. Oh, As we will yeah. be next Yay. week. If you come join us live uh, or catch our episode, make sure to subscribe, hit notifications, and all that jazz. Otherwise, See you next thank week. you very much. Thank you. See Bye. you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. For Bye. the call to quest. <laughs>